Ambassador Kim. Would you like your car to burn clean and green? Especially if you have a diesel engine car. I'm sure you've seen trucks out there, those big trucks, when they go up a hill, there's a puff of black smoke coming out. Wouldn't you like it if that black smoke went away completely and you knew the air you breathed was nice and clean? You would. There is a way to make automobile engines burn clean and green, and even jet aircraft not pollute. Today, you're going to hear about a way we can study that in my laboratory. And if you're willing to support that research, we can discover which additives might be put in fuels to make them so green and clean that you never see that black smoke. Would you like that? Yes. Clean air. Also, if you've ever read or seen about the problems in California, the smog, created by oxides of nitrogen, that too could be solved with the right kinds of additives. And I'll tell you about that, and I'll tell you about my laboratory in a few minutes. But first, a little background. I'm showing it on the TV here, and also on my iPad, the same thing. And what you're looking at is a plot of the temperature of burning in an engine on the bottom and the equivalence ratio, which is a measure of how much fuel to oxygen is used. So when there's a lot of fuel, the equivalence ratio is higher than one. It's up here. And when the temperature is high, you see that there's soot production up in the blue region. That's what you see in these diesel engines when they're going up, tr up hills. There has to be extra fuel to provide the power. The temperature is high. They put out soot, the black stuff that you see. Sometimes those trucks and diesel cars are operating in different conditions, high speed, low load. The temperature gets really high, but not much few excess fuel, and a lot of NOx. NOx is nitric, in that case is nitric oxide. That's what gets up into the atmosphere and causes the smog in Los Angeles. So sometimes the diesel engine is here, sometimes it's there, and we don't want it to be in either of those places. We want it to be right in the clean middle here. Unfortunately, the diesel engine in trucks and cars has to perform as you need it. If you're going up a hill, you need to press on that pedal and get the fuel you need. If you're cruising at a highway, you need to go at a high temperature, nice oxygen mix where it's gonna make NOx. The solution is to put something in the fuel to keep it away from these regions, and even if the engine does move into these regions, that fuel that goes in, that fuel additive, keeps this from happening. Fuel additives. And today I'm going to tell you about how we can determine what fuel additives one might add to a diesel fuel to keep the fuel so it doesn't do this and doesn't do that. But in order to determine what those fuel additives are, you need to first do research to determine if this additive will do what you think it might do. And in my laboratory, as some of you know from last week's presentation, I have a shock tube, or actually two shock tubes, that are designed to provide very high temperatures and high pressures to examine fuels in any one of these regions. Just to give you a little reminder, the shock tube, the high pressure shock tube, is shown here. Through the magic of iPad, I'll blow it up. The tube itself is this yellow wrap part right here. You can see it here. It's wrapped to keep it insulated. And it is a device that uses a shock wave to heat up hydrocarbon fuels and oxygen to very high temperatures and pressures so they react just like in an engine. And we take a sample out of the end of this, analyze it with a gas chromatograph mass spectrometer, and find out what is in that sample. And from that knowledge, know what the fuel is turning into or what the additive is turning into. 
And you can imagine if you want to come up with something to put in uh, diesel fuel so, it, so the engine operates clean, you want to know what happens to that thing when you put it in there. How does it break down? This is an experiment that can tell you that. We also have another version of the same kind of thing, a shock tube here, that operates at lower pressures so that we can do experiments over the whole pressure range applicable to an engine. So the low pressure shock tube is here, the high pressure shock tube is there, another gas chromatograph right here for measuring what's in the fuel as it breaks down. And from that experiment, here are some results. These are the kinds of species, chemical species, you see in the symbols that we get at different temperatures in the shock tube. Mole fraction is a measure of concentration. And you can see things that you might know are not good for your health from this typical fuel. Benzene, toluene, acetylene. Even if you don't know what those things are chemically, you probably have heard about them and know, I don't know if I want to be breathing that kind of stuff. And we are able to measure how much comes out from a fuel being broken down, and if we add an additive, what the additive will do for this kind of concentration. So my shock tube is a unique apparatus that allows the study of fuels and additives to examine the kinds of chemical species that are formed from the fuel and from the additive. Now the additives I'm proposing, and you have an opportunity to, to, tonight to provide financial support for the continued study of these additives, are these species here. Now, I suspect that your chemistry background may be something that you're familiar with from somewhat of a distant past, so let me just review what these symbols represent. On the top here, you have methyl stearate and n-butyl stearate. These are these biodiesels you heard a lot about, biodiesel fuels. They're long carbon chains with ester groups on them. You can see them here. This you get from biological sources. And though they can be used as a fuel, they could also be added to diesel fuel. And the oxygen, you see the O's? That could be uh, a factor in the cleaner burning of the fuel. But we don't know. We can hypothesize that. We need to put that in my shop <coughs> with some diesel fuels examine how that breaks down and how its pieces interact with the fuel pieces. In order to do that, we need to conduct a series of experiments. We need to have graduate students work on this, myself, and maybe some advanced researchers. In addition, we're proposing the study of two other oxygenated additives, something called dibutyl ether, the red part. You can see it there is an oxygen molecule. And that case over here, dibutoxyethane, a double ether. In both, all of these cases, there is oxygen contained in the molecule. And all of these fuels, by the way, can be obtained from biological sources. So the potential of having a sustainable additive that cleans up the burning of the fuel is there. But we won't know until we actually test it. And testing it means putting it in my shock tube combining it with other fuels, it doing a series of experiments as a function of temperature, pressure, getting all those species profiles out, and measuring them, and determining how the interaction takes place. Mm -hmm. So my proposal is to study these fuel comp four compounds in my shock tube with the help of graduate students who will do this as part of their PhD work, and a postdoc who is somebody who's already gotten his doctorate, this should be done in a period of three years. And if you would like to support this, please feel free to see me after the meeting. I will take any contributions you have to offer. Thank you. Now we have two to four minutes, two to four minutes for questions related to this. Great. Dr. Brzezinski, how, how do you know that it has a positive effect on the environment. What's, what's the effect? And can you tell me the difference between the soot spewing truck on an earth fuel and these additives? What's the difference? Well, the, the reason fuel soot is that there is too much fuel and not enough oxygen. 
And when these fuels burn, the hydrocarbon parts of the molecule can combine with each other to form the big carbon particles. Adding these kinds of additives, because they contain oxygen and they burn on them by themselves, at a time when the soot might form, the oxygen in these molecules interfere and inhibit the reactions that form the carbon molecules that lead to soot. There's been other work on similar compounds that have suggested that it's a possibility. We need to confirm and validate it and determine which of these would be the best. John? If these ideas you have are so good and marketable and maybe extremely profitable, why haven't any uh, large corporations put money into these efforts? Uh, large corporations do examine this, this kind of thing. Uh, the large corporations look exactly at what you're saying, how to market it and how to turn it into a product. They can't do that until they have the fundamental research that we do. So we are generally supported by government agencies that you represent to provide the science that corporations then take and use to develop the product. So in a sense, they're waiting for us to do this work. Darnell? Oh, yes, Dr. Chen, what would be a, a symptom of someone who would get affected by benzene or any of the other gases that you mentioned? What? Well, there, there, there are two types of effects for these kinds of chemicals, acute and chronic. Acute are the kind where you just <coughs> and choke it. That's what happens in LA. Mm -hmm. You get those bad smogs and you can't breathe uh, and you have respiratory problems. Asthma is a symptom mm -hmm. of that. Asthma, and in Chicago you have a higher incidence of asthma because of the, the air pollution here. Chronic effects are long-term effects, so benzene has a long-term effect. The symptom of that is death. <laughs> and your mortality rates. Uh, Amy? So the suit is often generated because the combustion was not complete. Exactly. Have you looked into other ways competing and what other com competitors are out there in this field at this point? Well, the, it's, the nature, it's the nature of a diesel engine to soot because of the way the fuel burns. Mm -hmm. So there are no ways to redesign the diesel to clean it up. What's done instead is a post-combustion filtration device is put on a diesel engine that captures the soot and then burns it up after the engine. That works, but obviously at the cost of fuel because any fuel that ends up in soot is fuel that's not burned. So it is possible to clean the exhaust, but it would be better if you could do something in the combustion chain. There are other technologies uh, for low temperature combustion where you kind of try and keep the temperature in that nice, clean, in-between region. That's all research at, uh, at this point and still not yet developed. I see my time is up. If there are other questions, I'll be happy to talk with you after. Yeah.